Looking for a completely natural, plant-based milk? Open your fridge. Irish cows are fed outdoors on a diet of fresh green grass. What? Have I got something to show you today? Kind of throwing this video together on a whim. Um, it's absolutely pouring it down with rain where I live at the moment, so I couldn't do anything, so I thought I'd jump on the internet. And what do I come across apart from this um, ad campaign uh, being run for Irish dairy? And I, I just have to share this with you because honestly, this is golden. It, it's, it's almost, it's almost like it's a parody. Um, you'll see for yourself. Let's look through it. The complete natural. I mean, don't you want to be as happy as that person? Let's find out how we can do that. Take a fresh look at Irish milk, cheese, and yogurt. What wonderful, healthy foods they are. Like the way this is written. Delicious, yes but also rich in the vitamins and minerals that a healthy body needs. Produced from milk that's produced by grass-fed cows. We hear a lot about grass-fed cows. Irish dairy is completely natural. Yes, because there's nothing more natural than for a man to fist a cow. Ooh, pride and passion. I always love to see, you know, how someone is proud of, uh, of this industry. Let's see what they say. The expertise of the Irish farming industry and the commitment of individual farmers and their families are vital ingredients in the success of Irish dairy, here at home and abroad. Well, the whole reason for this campaign is because you're not being very successful, so you have to pump so much money into advertising um, with these really shameless... They kind of treat people like they're stupid. This is like if you were writing a parody of an advert, the way they're like, Yes, delicious, but also full of blah, blah, blah. It's, it, it's, you know, it's like you're trying to sell something to a baby who's never heard of an advert before. They don't realize they're being advertised to. And I have got to see what they're going to be saying on animal welfare. Like, all right, how do we humanely kill a baby cow and steal their milk? Oh, my God. The world's luckiest cows. The world's luckiest cows are the enslaved cows. Okay. They're fed on a pasture-based diet, similar to myself. Most likely fresh green grass, yeah, pretty much what I eat. Where possible, they get to enjoy the great outdoors. Their welfare is constantly monitored. It's constantly monitored because if you let them die, you wouldn't make any money from them. But it's not because you actually care about them. If they didn't need to be constantly monitored and you could still get the milk from them, you, would, you wouldn't do it. It's all about the money. So you just kind of spin it to make it seem like you care about the animals, but you only care so far as your profits are involved. Every imaginable measure is taken to ensure that Irish dairy cows experience a good quality of life before we kill them. And yeah, here we go. Here's the admission. It's been proven that well-cared-for cows are more profitable. That is literally just what I said. That's all that you, all that you care about. By looking after our cows, we're looking after our industry. That's the bottom line, isn't it, really? And how you're not looking after someone by strapping them up, sticking your hands inside of them to forcibly impregnate them, taking their baby away from them. You know, this is a mammal like ourselves who has a strong bond with their child. You're not looking after them by doing these things to them. And you're not looking after them when, as soon as you're done with them, you ship them off to be shot in the head or have their throat slit. You know, you're just looking after the industry. That's all. That's the only thing you care about. Real talk. <laughs> I mean, all right. Food choice is increasingly being influenced by popular trends, food blogs, and media articles. With so many diverse sources, some can lack scientific accuracy, leading to confusion regarding which dietary choices are best to follow. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah, there's a lot of confusion. Some people think you're going to be sucking on the tits of a cow to be healthy. Real talk will shed light on a number of misconceptions within dairy. Real talk about, does dairy belong in a sustainable diet for the planet? Yes, dairy does belong in a sustainable diet for the planet, says the dairy industry. Okay, so it's all blah blah blah. So, with the global population set to increase by approximately 2.4 billion people by the year 2050, it's predicted that demand for food production may need to rise by about 70%, okay? That makes sense, whatever. 
the overall environmental impact of dairy must be weighed against its nutritional value when modeling the most sustainable options for feeding our growing population. I agree. I think that should obviously come second to whether or not there's any rights violations going on. The animal abuse is obviously more of a concern, I think, than, you know, weighing up, oh, how much resources does it take? What nutrition do we get out of it? But I agree with that sentiment. For example, cows convert human inedible materials such as grass into a nutrient dense affordable source of protein so why why the fuck would we be growing grass then to feed it to cows and then eat the cows when you could just grow something that you could eat to start with as well as being nutritious sustainable food production must also be safe economically viable environmentally acceptable and capable of meeting volume demands Right, so sustainable food production must also be safe. Safe for whom? Is the cow safe when they're in the truck to the slaughterhouse? I don't think so. Economically viable. It, how, how is it economical to convert lots of resources into a small amount of resources by funneling them through another animal? It, okay, that's just, it's like economics 101. You don't want to be wasteful. Environmentally acceptable fucking... That choice of wording, everything seems to be environmentally acceptable. We're destroying the planet and pretty much not a lot is being done about it. So environmentally acceptable, yeah, people do accept the fact that we trash the environment by raising billions and billions of these animals and killing them. And the last point, what was that? It was uh, capable of meeting volume demands. Yeah, whatever, if you, <coughs> excuse me, if you run a big enough holocaust, I'm sure you can meet the volume demands. Whew, sorry, I had a bit of a dry throat, so I had to go have a glass of soy milk, but I'm back now. So um, you can tell a lot of time and effort's been put into this campaign. They've got this fact or fad page here as well, which I think looks like a little quiz. Yes, it is. So we've got dairy is fattening. We're going to go with fact, I think. Fact. Uh, good fat, I hear you say. Are you kidding me? But it's true. Dairy does contain fat, but it's good and natural and it's part of a balanced diet. We need fat in our diet. Now, it's true that you need some fats in your diet. The saturated fat found in dairy, uh, which is basically fat which would be solid at room temperature, that's not good for you. To, especially in, in large quantities, like it's found in dairy products, especially like cheese. The dairy industry, the meat industry, the egg industry, they funded, at this point, countless studies trying to mislead and confuse the public into thinking they need lots of saturated fat in their diet to be healthy. But the opposite is true. And this is known uh, at like a, a government level, for example. You've had countries uh, like the United States, um, putting in guidelines recommending to people reduce the saturated fat intake and I believe it was even Finland that had their dietary guidelines chased to be changed excuse me to be based on the science which um, showed that they should be reducing the saturated fat intake and they had I think it was an 80% reduction across the country of cardiac mortality okay how do we go on what's the next with allergies, don't take chances, ask the experts. I mean, that's obviously a case, I don't know what that's got to do with dairy. Milk allergies, real experts know best. Amateur nutrition gurus, in other words, all of us, are very quick to diagnose a milk allergy. Okay, so I want to share something that's completely anecdotal. So, I cut out meat um, before going fully vegan, and I didn't really notice much change in my body or anything like that. However, when I cut out dairy, I noticed a big change and that's stayed true till this day. It's, it's been, you know, a few years now. Um, before, I used to be sick, like with, with a cold, uh, with coughs, runny noses. I would get headaches all the time, like really bad headaches sometimes. And this would happen like sometimes every month, sometimes every two months. And this happened from pretty much my, my mid-teens up until I cut out dairy entirely. So, I was probably allergic to that shit, which makes sense because, yeah, it's for a baby cow and, um, I mean, I don't particularly look like a baby cow. I'm pretty sure I'm not one. So it makes sense that consuming that was the reason I was sick, but I never would have put that together. And I also never kind of bring this up when I'm advocating veganism because I know that it sounds like nonsense. Like, I used to be sick all the time and then I just cut out this one thing and now I'm fine. But that's literally been my experience. Um, so yeah, I think this milk allergy, you know, 
I think a lot of people might suffer with that and it could manifest in many different ways. It could be uh, weight issues, it could be uh, kind of affecting your breathing and, and kind of nasal like seems to do to me. Um, and people just don't know because they're told to, you know, drink their milk. Um, I don't really know what the point of this fact or, or fad was. It just says talk to a professional. Well, the professionals are told the exact same thing. They're told to drink their milk. So they're basically in a roundabout way saying, just talk to us. Intake of some lactose is advised to help promote tolerance. Well, I know that the dairy industry would probably advise it because they would like your money. Um, I hope not. Just you don't. No one needs milk. And if milk makes you sick, if you're lactose intolerant, if you're going to be shitting your pants, I hope someone wouldn't advise you to try and shit your pants a little bit to, you know, get experienced at shitting your pants. Let's see. Lactose. Yes, you can. Lactose intolerance is caused by low le levels of the enzyme needed to digest the natural sugar in milk. That's because we're adults. We don't need to be digesting that milk. That's why babies produce it naturally. It's not necessary to cut out dairy fully from your diet yet because you wouldn't want us to stop paying you. Uh, quite often, intake of some lactose is advised to promote tolerance while most can take a daily amount. Blah, 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 blah. Have a whole glass of milk every single day. A whole glass of breast milk, even if you're lactose intolerant. That's the advice of the dairy industry. Dairy can cause acne. I don't know much about this, um, but I heard that it's true. I don't know. Don't blame your diet. Acne is caused by overproduction of a skin secretion, which may be very sensitive to hormones. Well, <laughs> okay. It, yeah, all right. Dairy probably does cause acne then. It, prim it, prim bleh. it primarily occurs during teenage years and in most cases will have cleared up by the early 20s unless you're unlucky like me. Okay, and here's the last question. Most cases of eczema are linked to dairy. Now, again, I don't know anything on the science of this. But a friend of mine, um, I told him the story actually about how I used to be sick all the time, um, but that I don't use that when I advocate veganism because it sounds made up. And he came back with, oh, I have the exact same thing apart from it's with, um, I think it was his mother. It was someone in his family had terrible eczema. Um, and as soon as they cut out dairy, it just stopped. It just cleared up. And they've been dealing with that their whole lives, well into adulthood. Um, so... Yeah, that was his, like, I don't tell that story because it sounds too good to be true. It sounds like I'm having you on. Let's see what the dairy industry thinks about it. Keep calm and dairy on. Science tells us that foods, including dairy, are not a single cause or cure for eczema. I like the wording that's very specific, not a single cause or cure. So the saying it may well be related, but they're phrasing it in a way that it sounds like it's not related. Um, it can have various causes. Sure, eczema can be a symptom of cow's milk allergy, but it's pretty uncommon. Again, I don't think we really know how common or uncommon these things are because dairy is so widespread and there's so much misinformation pushed by the industry, which people just lap up, ignoring that kind of pun. So before you think about cutting out dairy, get a medical diagnosis. Yeah, it's always the same thing. They always say, just, <clears throat> just go talk to your GP who doesn't really have you know, tons and tons of nutrition training. And a lot of the nutrition training they get is coming from the meat and dairy industries. Next, we'll have commenter number 19. Good afternoon. I'm Lana Fronson, and I proudly represent our dairy farmers of America. <laughs> I... And now I've been ranting about this website for so long that the rain has actually cleared up so I can go do something else. So thank you for your time listening to me complain. I hope you've enjoyed looking at this website. I know I fucking haven't and I'll see you soon.